probably. Here, let's just feather it a few pixels. Go back to the mask. Let's see how that looks. Maybe you just want to allow that. It's actually not looking very good right now. Okay, I got it. All right, I got this here. So um, that actually moves. So we're going to just reposition this about there again, and then let's see. That doesn't look too bad. And you see, it's not so noticeable now since the edges aren't as harsh. They're just you know feathered a little there. Yeah. Now that that's been done, we're going to hand track his logo the white logo on his shirt. What we're going to want to do is solo this layer and get another null object and rename it bullet hole holder. So we know it's the the information holder for our bullet hole later which we'll work on later. What we're going to want to do is go to the first layer where it gets shot, marked by this marker, and bring this point, top point, down to there. Um, we're going to press P on the keyboard and hit the stopwatch right here for the position keyframes. Where we're going to go is we're going to go forward one keyframe until we finish motion tracking his entire logo. So basically this should take a pretty long time, especially at near the end when we get into more complicated movements and uh, I'll meet you there. Now that we're to this point with the final stretch, we're going to want to make sure that we that we stay tight. This is the part that's going to give away whether or not the bullet hole looks at all good or not, starting from probably right here. Now, this might look like a pixelated mess to you, but this is going to be your lifeline, is this center right here. You're going to see where the white pixels bunch up the most. Now, it's, obviously it's going to be different for whatever footage you do, but there's always going to be a marker that you're going to be able to use. And uh, whether, it's, uh, whether it's a logo on a sweatshirt, or, you know, like a nose or an eye or anything else, this, all the same principles apply. It has to be in the exact same place from now on otherwise the effect is going to be given away really fast so this is probably one of the most crucial parts of the entire of this entire project now I got this I didn't I've uh, kind of been working on this pretty fast and uh, it's a little low for some of them and that 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 might be a problem but uh but yeah it should definitely take a while if it's more complicated than uh than this part. This is probably the most complicated part of the entire tutorial. What we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to create the actual bullet hole. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to layer, new, solid. Now we're going to pick something of a really dark gray, something like that. We're going to hit OK. And now we're going to zoom in on anywhere. It doesn't really matter, but because I'm kind of lazy, I don't want to move it later. I'm just going to do it where this point is, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a jagged bullet hole. Now, you can always resize this later, so if you don't get it right the first time, don't worry about it. And that's basically, that's basically it. Now, that's tiny. That is way too small. And double-click on the mask and bring it up. It kind of looks like Texas. Just noticing that. Now, what we have is a little bullet hole, sort of. We're going to turn that off, and you can kind of see where it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to where he gets shot, and I'm going to take this gray solid, and I'm going to bring it right down to nothing. And I'm going to place it where I want. Now, to make sure that we get this right, we're going to turn on the blood, and this is going to be underneath the blood. And we're going to make sure that the point where the blood comes out of the body is the same point 
that this bullet hole is, which, you know, sounds pretty obvious, but in the in the example that we showed you before, it wasn't great because the motion tracking was done after the blood was already precomposed, but in the same spot, and it was just too complicated to go from there. What we're going to do is we're going to take this pick whip and select the bullet hole holder, which is that part right there. Now, ideally, what you're going to want to do is play around with the brightness when it goes in and out of the shadow area. It should be a little bit brighter right there. But uh, it doesn't really matter for this part. I mean, like, you kind of get the idea of the bullet hole. Um, what we're going to do after this is do another tracking data. We're going to go up to here and go to new null object, and we're going to name this cupboard. Now this null object is going to hold the tracking data for this section of the video. So we're going to go down to the video, and we're going to select tracker, track motion, and have rotation selected again. We're going to take the first one, make it kind of, kind of tall, and select this handle right here. And then I'm going to take this one and select this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find this, uh, I'm going to analyze forward, pressing the play button down here. And it's going to find the end there, and I'm going to press edit target, make sure cupboard is selected, and hit apply. Now basically what's happened is there's tracking data now for the cupboard area, which is where we're going to add the second bullet hole. So the bullet's going to hit here, and then one frame later, the bullet here is going to appear. So what we're going to want to do is find the bullet hole PNG. I used bullet hole, or rough bullet hole 3 from video from the video copilot um, Action Essentials 2. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this bullet hole and we're going to place it where we want it on the cupboard. Now that's extremely large, so... I'm going to select the bullet hole again and uh, scale it down. If you want to scale it down without this going on, you hit shift. And then you can uh, keep the same dimensions. So I'm going to bring it down to there and I'm going to zoom in on it. Wait, and I, you can zoom in and move by holding the space bar and then moving. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select an ellipse tool <clears throat> and basically make a circle around the bullet hole. I'm going to go down to the expansion and bring that up just a tad and then bring up the feathering. So basically what we have here is a bullet hole that matches the cupboard a little bit more. Now to make it better I'm going to find the curves adjustment and bring that out and brighten it up. Now it really looks like it's part of the cupboard. We're going to go down here and press fit, that will bring it to the screen dimensions. And uh, basically, it starts and one frame later there's a, uh, a bullet hole. Now this bullet hole floats around, so it doesn't look too great. But luckily, we've already motion tracked the cupboard, so all I have to do is take the pick whip once again. And select the cupboard. And before you know it, the bullet hole sticks on the cupboard. Like it belongs there. So, that looks pretty good, but there's something missing from that hit. And you can also add this to the bullet hole effect on his body. Oh, something I'm noticing here is that it kind of looks like crap. <laughs> so what we're going to want to do is go down here, select the dark gray solid, the bullet hole layer, and go to motion blur, and then turn the motion, bl motion blur on for the whole thing. So what you'll see is it will blur out when he's moving fast. So it looks, a it looks more realistic, and that actually adds quite a bit. Now, you won't have to worry about that to there because the camera doesn't jar or move that hard in any way. So, 